Well, hold on a second. We're just getting ready to Zoom. Yep, we're being live streamed now. Got it. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, this is Alex, and uh, uh, it's a you know we had a kind of an interesting week last week with uh, the whole COVID thing, and uh, hopefully Marjorie will join us today. She's not feeling really well, uh, but uh, you know. Uh, let me see here. How do I get this to go under here? I gotta get rid of something. Oh, there we go. I'll go um, close down. What is it? Unpin from taskbar. Now close window. Uh, let me see if I can close the window. There we go. There we go. And it's uh, still. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I have no idea what's what's working and not working. Okay. Is it all working? Are we going out? Hold on a second. Let me just go check and see if we're going out here. Let me go there and uh, let me go over here. Where are we? There we go. There's that. Let me make sure we're going out. Okay. Are we going out? Yes, we are. Okay. I just want to make sure. I had to make sure of that because I just cleared out my, uh, uh, my what do you call it? My, uh, uh, my, my browser. So anyway, hello, how are you? Excuse me for all of that. If I'm a little out of it today, cause I'm still, we still got, we're having some kind of post COVID thing here in which Marjorie is not feeling that great, but I don't, I don't know if she, if, if she said she'd try to join us today. So we'll see what happens, but there is Charlene S out there, I think in uh, San Diego. Uh, and oh, there's Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Here, how are you? How you feeling? How you feeling? Hanging in there. Yeah, hanging in there. Hello, Shecky. Hello, Ben. Hello, Edward Berger. That's right. And hello to Charlie Wallace. Hey. Did you notice you made Charlie smile, Edward, just by saying hello? Uh huh. Your other options. the first go. Thank you for joining us, Steve Bender. Good to see you here. Yeah. Yeah. I missed you. Missed you guys. Yeah. Oh, we miss you too, Charlene. In uh, I believe Charlene is in San Diego. <laughs> oh, there's some audio coming through. Got the radio on or something. Got a radio. I'm leaving. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It was that. Oh, there was probably some TV set on or something. Was my son is working from home and I was having him help me set this up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Jeff Stein, we don't see you yet, Jeff, but uh, turn on your camera, turn on your microphone, and we'll be able to see you. So, uh, and uh, uh, Mandy, how's your week been? How's my week been? It's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to last week. It, it, it was definitely much better than the other week. The, the week, week since we've talked to you last. Well, yeah. Yeah. Friday. Yeah. Well, Marjorie and I have been uh, the last week. We've been suffered. We had suffered with. Uh, we'd gotten COVID. Come down with COVID. How are y'all? And then we got those pills that we took for five days, which Marjorie says affected her badly. I didn't feel anything terribly horrible about them. You know, just a metallic taste in your mouth. Yeah. You know, uh, some people consider real and pleasant. Other people don't. So, you know, there's Jeff. Okay. Uh, and uh, so we, we basically, we, you have a, you feel you've been having bad effects from it, Marjorie? Yeah. Really? Because I don't think it's from that. I don't think it's uh, what the, the cure is worse than the disease. I think so. Yeah. Well, some people do complain about it. So, but I got through it. Okay. Well, and then huh? Yep, swing on the other side of it. Are y'all feeling any better? Well, yeah, but I'm feeling weak still, quite weak. Um, and Marjorie today, I mean, I took her over to Apple to get her watch because they put a new battery in it, but they didn't put a new battery in it. They just said, fuck it, we'll just give her a new watch. So, that, <laughs> you know, it's the, it's the, if you take anything into Apple, they usually say, well, we replaced it, you know. Anyway, um, but... Uh, when I had her there, she was in such bad shape this morning. 
that really she looked like a real old lady. <laughs> you know, everything she was saying, it was just like I was dealing with it. We were dealing with an old lady. I brought her home. She had something to eat. She took a couple of dumps or something because she's felt <laughs> constipated. Oh, and, so much information. And she, and she, she looks better, you know. So there's a recently unconstipated Marjorie. So <laughs> there we go. Hello to uh, Paula Levin. Hello there. <clears throat> Oh. Out there in Ohio. Yes, it's, uh, a it's a beautiful day here. Yeah, you know, you're out in Ohio. Is that one of the states where you can't get? Yes, abortion? it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, much, much, much to my much to my despair. Yeah, Paul, it's, it, it's uh, we, we have a very uh, um, right wing legislature. Yes. And they're all they're all joyful. Oh, in fact, there's one. What state was it? They're having a national, making it into a, a state holiday every That's year. Texas, of course. Texas. Oh, brother. That's Texas. Yeah. yeah. Is, are they making it? Are they making it? A, no, but there's another state, too. But in your state, Charlie, they, they're making it a That's what holiday. they said. They haven't done it yet, but that's their that's number one on their agenda. Well, uh, we're all so happy for you. Mm. Hey, geez. This is, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, speaking of interracial marriage, because Supreme Court justice is married to a black woman. Yeah, yeah. He didn't, he didn't right. say there'd be a problem with that. I don't think he realizes he's black. No, I, don't. <laughs> I, think, you're right. I think you're right. Well, you know, it'd be good if they did come up with a law not allowing whites <laughs> to marry blacks, and he'd have to, he'd have a reason to leave her and not have to put up with her. You know, I mean, he loves her. It's very plain that, that, that this is a real love match. I'm not really? sure. What, I'm what? Not can sure. you can you just tell me, Paula, since you've seen her and heard her, what is there to love? Uh, th there's a um, there's a song that I remember from Cabaret. It's if you could see her through my eyes, you know, like I, you know, like I don't see her through his eyes, but yeah, yeah, who knows mm -hmm. what. Hey, Andrew Deutsch, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Where are you going? This way. That way, okay. <laughs> Hold on, I'm switching. So anyway, Marjorie and I took these pills for five days, and supposedly that's supposed to knock out the virus completely. I, I didn't really have anything terribly wrong with me because I didn't get to a point where it got horrible before I took these pills. And they do start stopping the, the effects pretty fast from what I've been told. But uh, I can't tell you whether it worked or not because I didn't really have it that bad. Uh, but I did test positive, and that's all that mattered. And today we just tested ourselves, and I had to test Marjorie twice because once she came up with a really faint line, this really faint line on that strip. And uh, so I tested her again, and then it didn't come up at all. So, ta-da! You know. Well, I mean, Alex, maybe I missed something, but... Uh, 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 what, did you say something about Marjorie not doing well? She's just not feeling well. She's just, oh. she's, you know, and uh, I, she that. seems to think it was because of the of the cure that we took, you know. Uh, and I, I didn't really feel much of anything. So. so how are things going with you, Steve Bender? Uh, could be better, but um, you know, yeah, sure. it's been a, it's been a rough time. I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather not talk about. I, I know it. you you you've written me about the fact that you're having a rough time. You 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 don't tell me what it is, but I I I do feel your your pain. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you be very careful because it was a uh, it was a post COVID thing with my daughter and. Um, ended up in the hospital for a while, and um, it was very scary. Very post, scary. Post COVID. Wow. Things, are, things are okay now, but um, yeah, it was uh, really, really the worst thing I've ever gone through. So. But it was a resurgence of COVID, or was it something it was, else? It was something else. I mean, they don't fully understand it, so we're still, you know. You know something? I don't think they understand COVID. They don't. I really they don't. don't. Know, they don't know enough. They don't have, they, you know, they will at some point, but it's too new. They don't know enough. You know, I mean, I, I, uh, I came, when we finally came down with it, I even said to myself, do these, uh, 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 what do you call tests really work? Or, you know, how come a week ago I tested positive and now I'm not? Well, I went through a whole bunch of stuff that supposedly took care of it, but should I clear up that fast? 
If you have, I mean, if you had a PCR, you'd still be positive for sure. But you, but you're not contagious, and it's on its way out. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were with Apple. We had a thing with Apple. Marjorie uh, had to. What is all the noise there? What is that? Anyway, uh, Marjorie, Marjorie had to get her watch back from Apple. They wrote her and they said, your, your watch is coming. They told her it would take, what, uh, seven to ten days. And two days later, they said, come pick up your watch. But by then we had gotten COVID and she couldn't go down there to pick it up. And they said, just call this number if you're not going to be able to pick it up in the next five days. So she calls the number and tell them what happened, Marjorie. You're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah, yeah. Tell them the talking. Oh well, what happened was it wouldn't answer the phone. Oh jeez. So so she calls to Apple and says, "I can't get a hold of these people." At the blah blah blah. And so the the Apple tries to get a hold of them, and the they Texas, can't. Apple, Apple in Texas. Apple in Texas. Yeah, they try to get a hold of them, and they can't. I mean, you would think they have some workaround number, you know, that they could call. Suppose you want to warn them that there's been a terrorist threat against your Apple store and you can't call them to tell them, you know. Uh, and uh, so she couldn't she couldn't do that. And uh, it was horrible. It was just ridiculous. And today we got an answer from a guy that didn't make any sense at all. He wasn't grasping what we were saying, that nobody at your place was answering the goddamn phone. And um, so anyway, we decided we were going to go down there with our post COVID and then at the very end, take off our masks and cough into the crowd and leave. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't. We were nice, good citizens about this, you know. And, uh, so, uh, but we still have to wear a mask for another five days, I think, because they want, you to, keep, want you to keep wearing them. But I don't know. They, they reinstituted the mask mandate out here about five weeks ago, and they canceled it yesterday. And I never put the mask on during those five weeks. Nobody said a word to me. And, you know, whatever. Well, I don't know what that was. About five days ago, they issued a mask mandate about, again. About four or five weeks ago. Oh, actually. okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, just in our county, though, all the other counties around us, nothing. And here we're. So, so yeah. Fast. I mean, you're supposed to still, you're supposed to still have them on the subway and buses, but nobody is, right? Right. Really? I, I well, I haven't gone. I went on this. Did I go on the subway once since then? <laughs> people seem to be wearing masks, but uh, yeah, it's about half. I mean, I was on the subway yesterday, and it was crap. Well, it was a crazy day yesterday with Pride and everything, but yeah, it was crowded on the subway and not a lot of masks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, the the trouble is that New York is at a high again for infections, but the hospitals aren't even filling up at all. I think they've had, they had like six cases last week or something really small and insignificant. So apparently the, you know, the immunity that people have gotten from the, from the shots uh, have helped a great deal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like Marjorie and I didn't need to go to the hospital. It was, in fact, it was a hospital where we got it. So if I want to go, we get reinfected. <laughs> you know, and uh, gee, it, it's also wonderful. To, uh, 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 Shecky can clue you in on this because of the, our new Supreme Court, which is just a, a wonderful Supreme Court. Um, <laughs> because of our new Supreme Court, I'm just doing some stuff here. Uh, because of a new Supreme Court, uh, we now here in New York can carry guns uh, as sidearms, right? Shecky, wouldn't that be what we could do? You could have concealed weapons. Concealed right. weapons. Oh, okay. All right. So, hey. Can you imagine that one person was responsible for putting three people in, and they're telling us 400 million people how we can live our lives? I don't understand it. And look at these three people. Right. Like, this is Brett. Brett oh, well, you know, we don't we don't often get political on this show, but last week was such an overabundant week with stuff to just be pissed off about. Uh, that you know, you, they you lied. huh? They lied. they lied during their. their well, driveway. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, they lied. If, if they lied to Congress, if it's not my, if I'm not mistaken, that's a federal crime. 
It should yeah. be. And if they are guilty of a federal crime, they could be, um, uh, what do you call it? Barred. Impeached. <laughs> Impeached. Uh, so I say, let's charge him with it. Because, yeah. I mean, even Joe Manchin said, I feel betrayed. I felt lied to. What? You expect that these people were telling the goddamn truth? You know? Give, me Give me a break. And six of these justices were, not only three, six were appointed by presidents who did not win the popular vote. Exactly. Six of them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. Well, who? Well, let's see here. First of all, Trump. But who was the other one? W. W. w? Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you know, uh, just not good. Not good. Well, Anyway, I'll see y'all in uh, in Europe, you know. <laughs> yeah, you might. <laughs> and, and this is what happens when the Democrats have the presidency of the House and the Senate. So you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, they've said it. They said it. When they take back the Senate, they're gonna they're gonna get rid of you know. Yeah, Con contraception. They're gonna get rid of. What was the reaction, Andy, Andy? What was the reaction down in Georgia? <laughs> yeah, was there a reaction? <laughs> she's got the I can't do this. Ah, yuck. All right, hands are all full. Just just push on the, I'm sorry. there you go. There I'm you sorry. go. I'm listening. Um the reaction in Georgia, mm -hmm. um, everybody I'm talking to is upset. But yeah. it's my you know, my circle. Um yeah. I, there was some murmurings in the office today. Um some of the people that work here were saying some things that were not taken very well. <laughs> we're not taken very well? Well, just ignorance. What, what, what do you mean? What, they were saying things that were not taken very well. What do you personal mean responsibility. Personal responsibility. Have you ever heard of being roofied? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can get roofied. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. Uh, it, no, but I mean, just as even a matter of arguing about when life begins and you know when is it at conception or when you take it but it's the government basically making you use your body against well, your life brain. begins at conception and death begins when somebody with an illegal gun shoots you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right you know you know it's uh, kind of, it's very I a living person than i do as a corpse the, i have sign it away like if they want to take my organs i have to sign something yeah um, to allow that to happen or it has to be documented but it's like you know but if i'm forced to have a baby i'm forced to have a baby yeah well you know this whole idea about you should take personal responsibility uh what about a, a condom that breaks yeah how, how are you avoiding personal responsibility when a condom breaks you took what you know and, and the bottom line is you cannot claim a, an unborn child on the taxes because they don't consider a person. So yeah, you're right. What's the argument? I mean, yep. how, does this, how does this not violate Jewish law? Yeah. Which, right. Which exactly. permits abortion and in fact says it's important to do it if the mother is at risk or anything. Well, wait a minute. I don't know. You know, it, it, you're more of a Jew than I am, I guess. Not really, but I, <laughs> I've been reading a bit about this. So. But oh, wait a minute. Paula's got her hand up on that one. I do indeed. Uh, um, I, I have this on, on not the highest authority, but certainly on authority uh, that uh, uh, the interpretation in Jewish law is that, that uh, um, before the baby draws, for the fetus draws its first breath, it is considered a part of the mother. And therefore abortion is permissible and I would also note that in Israel, abortion, Israel, which is which is uh, dominated by very religious people, abortion is legal. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I'm hopeful that that uh, um, uh, that um, that a case for religious discrimination is approached. I I, I I did not know that. Yeah, there were synagogues. I, I, there are suits already being filed by synagogues, I mean, you know, about this, as they should. I, I, I'd like to know where, because I will, I'd be happy to join that. Uh, uh, Char that, that's, that. That's a First Amendment violation, for sure. Absolutely. Char Char Charlie Wallace says his hand up. Charlie? Yeah, I also want to point out that not only is abortion legal in Israel, 
it is paid for by the universal health care system. Right. Is is abortion? I was asked Marjorie this, and she didn't know because it's been so long since she got an abortion. Uh, uh, oh God, Alex! <laughs> Nothing is you know, Alex? family. No, no. no. I was but no. But my question to her was: Is abortion covered by Medicare? No. No. Well, I, I didn't know. You know, you know Alex, they, they, and they, they, they say that the condom offers 100% protection, but I'll tell you from experience, it doesn't when my husband come. Yeah, we can, you're kind of breaking up on us, Andrew, a little bit, you know, because you're in the car, and that causes that to happen. Right, I'm back into a network. All right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, uh, I did not know that about about uh, Jewish, you know, Jews believing that abortion is okay uh, because it's part of the mother before before it's born. It is not. You see, what they're doing these these Christians really have a crazy way of looking at things. They're looking at it as though the kid inside of you is already another human being. And really, it could not exist without the mother. It could not exist outside of the womb. Mm -hmm. And so I, I've never understood that argument. You know, there's a point, there's, there's a point where it becomes. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, Mandy? I was just going to say, bottom line, when the state in any states that make it illegal, it's forced birth. It's You're forcing a person to be an incubator against their will. I mean, it's crazy. Like, dark ages shit. Like, I it's just, slavery. Yeah. I, <laughs> wow. It, yeah. That is slavery. Yes. Yeah. Because pregnancy is actually dangerous in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these are the same people you can't tell to wear a mask because it impinges on their freedom. Right. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, right. it's, it's, they're so. It's so crazy, stupid. It boggles the mind. And it comes down to it's not really about they're so worried about this person it's about control they don't like right. women being able to move up the corporate ladders and have you know education and things like that that's yeah, what it's going to keep women pregnant and at home yeah yeah oh boy yeah. Unfor unfortunately by the yeah. way this is nice it's still considered nice talk because everybody's very considerate here you know? mm. let's hope so yeah but uh, unfortunately there are, uh, um there are women who are who are on the front lines of the um, the pro life um, movement, and um, uh, it's patriarchal for sure, but uh, and women's rights for sure. But you know, then there's Amy Co Coney Barrett. Yeah, right. but the bottom isn't the bottom line that seventy percent of the country supports the right to an abortion. Right. Well, you know, a Amy Coney Barrett has what seven kids? Is it? Yeah, and I think a couple of them are adopted. Uh huh. But she has at least, I think, five kids at least that she bore. Yeah. And there's a there's a theory that I heard propounded uh, several years ago. Expounded. What's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, put forth that for every baby past two that you have, you're killing a baby somewhere else in the world because of the pressure on the on the the populations and what it causes. And I just think that when you go out and have five kids, you're a selfish bitch. You know, you really, that's, that's in this day, uh, of course, I'm speaking as a Jew, and traditionally Jewish families are pretty small. They're never more than about two. Um, not, not for the Orthodox. Oh, the Orthodox, they keep yeah. pumping them out forever. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, who wants to go to Brooklyn and see them? So, you know. <laughs> I think those numbers that you're talking about, Alex, are are more modern as compared to if you go what what maybe what your parents said. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uncles and cousins. Yeah. I think a, a lot of my families have much more kids than the two. You know. Yeah, yeah. Shecky, you've been rather quiet today. I got nothing. Well, yeah, <laughs> just because you can't get pregnant doesn't mean, you know. But uh, because the other day when I talked to you, you were just fed up with all of this. 
right? Well, that's why I got nothing to say. I'm yeah. fed up. So what I mean, am I going to do? His, fa- gonna, his, his, his the phrase he uses continually with me on on a phone call is whatever. <laughs> what? Like, did you see um, today? The Supreme Court said apparently there's some football coach who would take his players to the 50 yard line yep. and get on their knees to pray. Yep. That's okay. Bye. Fine. So now, okay. we can pray, now we can pray in school. That opens that one up. Yep. Right. Yeah. You know, we were Marjorie and I were talking about when we were kids. They literally had us pray in school. Absolutely. Yeah, they had us pray in school, and now uh, you know uh, Amy Coney Barrett and Kavanaugh and the rest of these people will go. What was wrong with that? That's great having making kids uh, say a prayer every morning. The only well, problem one nation was, under God. Remember when they put yeah. that in? Oh, well, that the 50s, part they added that phrase. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But the thing was that when I was a kid, the one thing that bothered me the most was having to say that prayer. And the reason it bothered me is they would always sneak something in. You know, they would go, Dear God, please make us learn good studies today and make uh, learn to do the things that are right in life. And please guide us in the right way to live our lives and so on and so forth. And I'd go, I'd have my head bowed just like the other kids because I don't want to get beat up after school, you know, mm-hmm. and and I'd have my head what, bowed. What, that wasn't part of the prayer? Wait, please wait don't beat up wait, that little Jewish kid. Wait a minute. <laughs> then they would throw in the zinger, the one that got me every time. In Jesus' name we right. pray, amen. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going, my head was bowed. My God won't like me. You know, I mean, I was terrorized by it. It really, it really struck me huh. wrong. And people go, "Oh, what's wrong with prayer in school?" That's what's wrong with prayer in school. Which prayer? Mm-hmm. You know, is it going to be the There's Muslim a, prayer? Is it going to be the about just a prayer? moment of silence? <laughs> well, you got a moment of silence to think about things and to, you know, think about people you love and care about, and so on and so forth. But no, in Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why they're praying to my like accountant, what Jesus the, Rivera, uh, anyhow. What did you say? <laughs> As in my accountant, Jesus Rivera gets upset, everybody's always praying to him. Hey, wait, that's my, that's my gardener. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I just think that this whole idea about, I mean, they, they act like this is, they say this often. This is a Christian nation. Well, if it is, I don't it's belong money. here. What? It's on the money. Yeah, it says, God it, says, it says it on the money. In, in God we trust. Sure. Yeah, but but it says God. You know, God is a nebulous term, in a way, because you know the, the Muslims have a God, you know, and the Jews have a God, and the Christians have a God. Everybody's got a God. So yeah, the dislikes they, have a dog. Hmm. The dyslexics have a dog. But are there are there any atheists here right now? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, I how 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 am I surprised, Charlie? Uh, 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 you know, I mean, how are they represented? You know, and they should be. But anyway, so um, Alex, that's like the downfall of our society, you know, is because when they stopped the prayer in schools, that's what's wrong with kids these days. Yeah, yeah. right. That's why they they are, they are the way that, that's why they listen to that rap music. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why they shoot up 22 kids in some school somewhere yeah yeah uh, that thing in Vivaldi, texas man the more i hear about it the more incensed i get are these guys are standing in the hallway while they hear bullets going you know shots well they had that their donuts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those kids had heartbeats and now they're harassing the mother that ran into the school to try and yeah, save yeah. kids. Now the police are harassing her. Why are they harassing her? I didn't hear that. Because oh, she did what they didn't have the balls to do. Yeah. yeah. Made them look oh, bad. Oh, Made them wow. Look bad. wow. I, didn't, I didn't know about that. Huh? You see, we've kind of been out of it for the last week, Marjorie and I. We've been lucky. we got to pick a good week to be out of it. We've, yeah. we've been in this COVID coma, you know. Um, but uh, anyway, so um, I know it's just uh, we have all these little little problems. Uh, they uh, and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and, and nobody does anything about them. And I'm I'm just really surprised, you know. But anyway, why are you surprised? Yeah, right. You know, 
Well, I'm not surprised. I think I just said that because I'm feeling a little woozy right now. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just trying to say something. But anyway. So what else is there to talk about? Come on. I tried, to get, I, I tried to get my mind off all this crap, so I went to see Elvis, and boy, was that a mistake. Uh, I, I, that looks terrible. It's um, you know, nothing against Tom Hanks as an actor, but I this is one of the most embarrassingly, excruciatingly bad performances I've ever seen. They put <laughs> Tom Hanks in a fat suit with a big nose and a stupid accent. And it's just awful. It's awful. Wow. Uh, Baz Luhrmann stuff pretty much sucks every yeah, time I've ever much. seen it. Pretty I mean, much. I mean, it's well, got some visual flair, but that's about it, right? It's you know not good. It's very two-dimensional. And it's three hours long or close to three hours. Oh, long. really? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Whatever happened, to, Shecky? Whatever happened to short movies? Every now and then, I'm watching a movie on TCM, and I go, "How long is this?" And it says eighty minutes. Uh, eighty minutes. Right. Yeah. You know, they managed to tell a whole story in eighty minutes, and, and today we can't tell it in three hours. Nope. I mean, what was like? Just bring up Citizen Kane. What was that? One hundred and ten minutes, maybe. Yep, that was one hundred and ten. I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, you go. Wow. You know, what do we need that for? Well, that, that made it an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. So, I, yeah. But, but, Before I um, told you, the, you know, I watched that um, Doctor Strange movie. It was oh. two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, That's the minimum. Got me. I started watching it because of my illness. I started dozing off during it. And so I don't know what happened, but I have a funny feeling that if I had watched it, I still wouldn't know what happened. <laughs> Well, they're on like Earth five million. You know, it's you know. You, oh, get, I'm, you know what I'm sick and tired of book. in all this sci-fi and all these this comic book stuff. Enough with the multiverse. Yeah. That yeah. you know, that's like an excuse for every mistake you've made in plot. You know. Oh well, that didn't really happen because this was happening in another multiverse. Oh, <laughs> screw you! Leave me alone. It's like having like having a psychic in a in a mystery. No clues, no no opportunity, and then miraculously the psychic knows. Plot twist. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, um, what were we going to uh, say? No, I was just going to say, like, Charles Foster Kane was from the multiverse. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> another universe, in another part of the multiverse, there was no sled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how we excuse. What they do is they excuse what's gone on for the last two hours in a movie by just washing it, writing it off to the multiverse. Uh, it, it, it's a catch-all excuse. But they've often in movies over the years they've had catch-all excuses. You know, you watch a whole movie. What is this all about? How did that happen? How could this happen? At the very end, they explain all the stuff you didn't see during the plot to explain it. Well, that sounds like a serial, you know, a chapter ending. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we didn't show you that. That's how they got out of it. Yeah, well, they, sometimes when they're writing it, I know because I've been in the process sometimes of writing, and if you suddenly say, well, how am I going to get out of this? This person's in a bad case thing. How's he going to get out of it? You then go back earlier in the script and write in something that will then explain it later on. But it's just it's an it's, it's an excuse for a device. So yeah, whatever. So uh, am I slurring my words today, Marjorie? No. Uh -huh. Okay, I felt like I was. Uh. Oh boy, we have some more coffee here. Um, so um, um, let me see here. What else happened this week? We had the prayer by the by the uh, 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 guy in in high school. But now you're now does that mean everybody's allowed to pray on the field whenever they want to? Apparently. Yes. Well, they yeah. could pray anyway. They just couldn't organize it in the center of the field like he was doing. Now well, they can. Now they can. But he's already working in Florida now, and that took place in what Washington or something place like that or Oregon. Who made that okay or something? Yeah. But I mean, it's just. This is for football players, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, this was a football coach, not even the head coach. Well, I've often had a feeling that I don't mind if you believe in God and you believe well, in it. Go on the sidelines and go have your little prayer or back no, in the just, no, room. No, just don't inflict it on me. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, why is it a lot of these religious people feel they have to inflict their religion on you? That's what my big argument has always been. Yep. Because in a lot of, you know, denominations, that's the, that's the key. You're supposed to be evangelizing. You're supposed to be bringing people to know Christ and that kind of thing. So they think they're yeah, doing. Yeah, but if this fellow had been a Muslim, he'd probably be in jail right now. Yeah. Sure. It, can you imagine somebody whipping out a rug and doing it? No, no way. They, yeah, it's... no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Uh, and the Supreme Court would have said, don't bring this to us. We don't even want to, we don't want to even yeah. rule on it. In fact, this one, they almost didn't let happen. I think it was just that one of the justices let it be accepted by the, because it was, it was literally thrown out by about two other lower courts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. none of that seems to matter. Charlene, yeah. how's everything where in San Diego you are you're is that where Pastor you are? Valley. Pastor Valley. Valley. Well, that's close to San Diego. <laughs> uh, Closer to San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, at Castro Valley. Yeah. How's Pretty everything good. how's everything doing in the Bay Area? It's doing okay. It's been really, really hot. Warm. Yeah. Really hot, but otherwise. Nice. We've had a couple of hot days here. Oh, yeah. like how hot? Huh? 96 here yesterday. Well, we had 90 uh, degrees. 90 degrees. Uh, it was 100 last week here. Really? Yeah. Well, today's okay, well, the first I, day in two weeks under 100. So what are you saying? Your weather is better than our weather? <laughs> what you're implying? Our, our, our humidity is 10%. Yours is probably 80. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You, the humidity down in Georgia? You swim it. You swim to your car. Yeah. 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 It hasn't been really terrible, but we last week we... I, I lived in Houston, Texas. Uh, Charlie, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Houston, for 10 months out of the year, is so humid that you can't keep a crease in your pants. <laughs> you know? I mean, the humidity, I never, when I when I moved there, I never felt humidity like that in my life. Because I was from San Francisco. The most humidity we get is a good fog, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, humidity... Uh, was just unrelenting and it's it can get pretty bad here in new york city you know yes. i always remember that song summer in the city by the love and spoonful you know that music they play right at the very beginning that da, da, um, i said that's how it feels that's exactly <laughs> how it feels you know yeah. uh, but of course shecky has lived in new york all his life yeah, so I so I guess you just learned to live with the humidity, right? I haven't really had the air conditioner on all season. I'll turn it on for like mm. an hour to get the humidity out of the house, and then I turn it back off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, yes, yes, Jeff. I remember when very few people had air conditioning. Yeah. And, uh, it was brutal. Yeah. Well, they would sleep on the fire escape. Yes. <laughs> and maybe like if your parents had one air conditioner in mm -hmm. their room. Well, in my day, you would go to a movie theater. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the big deal they made, they had a big sign, they had a big, you know, that sign outside, amazing. air conditioned. Yeah. When did they first put air conditioning in, in movies, Rick? Do you know? Do you have any idea? I'd like to say the 20s, but not mm -hmm. only in the palaces, I don't think. But how did they make it work? Was it the same kind of air conditioning we have today? Or was it, you know, some air that was passed through ice or what? No, I think it was passed through ice thing. on the roof or something. Really? Oh, okay. Because like the Ed Sullivan Theater did not have air conditioning pretty much until we came there. Really? Wow. wow. So you mean Ed Sullivan, Sullivan did that show without air conditioning? Seriously? Well, yeah, or when he did, it was at lock of ice on the roof. Wow. Okay, but tell them how cold it was inside the theater, That's because cold. Dave wanted it this way. Mm -hmm. But it's also, you have to remember, 
year in broadcasting, mm -hmm. you turn the lights on oh. in the theater, it gets very hot. Yeah, very quickly. But the mm -hmm. reason for that, he, he wanted the temperature inside at 55. So people weren't falling asleep. <laughs> but I think every, 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 every comedian would say you'd laugh. Every comedian would say you laugh more in a cold environment than a hot environment. Jackie had a, a Jackie had a, a, a late night jacket with I believe was wool lined or something, and well, I still wear that one. That was a studio coat. He, that's uh, what they called the studio uh, coat because it was so cold in there that they had to it was have a Patagonia. It was a Patagonia. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, oh. yeah. So I mean, um, uh, so he really it must have cost a fortune to put in that air conditioning. Yeah. But yeah. you would notice if you came down from the office building and you'd walk into the theater area, the temperature would drop 20 degrees when you opened a door. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That's some super air conditioning. Wasn't, yeah. his, wasn't his theory was that he wanted it at that temperature because people laughed more when they were cold? Well, they weren't, they weren't sleepy. Yeah. You're, you're definitely more alert. When I was teaching, I'd keep the air conditioning cranked up because if it gets warm, kids start slouching over and falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Same with comedians, I think. But, you know, you want them to be awake and alert and laughing. Yeah. Or if you're in a club, it's the alcohol. But you, mm -hmm. you can't drink in a TV studio. Right. What was the temperature at Bill Cosby's place? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it was comfortable, whatever it was. <laughs> it was warm. Or maybe no, maybe it was very humid, so that the women would get drowsy. And he, he didn't have to ply them with a pill. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but he lost another court case last week. If yeah, I, I saw correctly. that. What did he? Yeah. What was this one about? This was another a, oh, woman that he apparently case. attacked. It was a civil case, and civil he just case. paid. He just paid it off, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> half a million. Half a million or something. Yeah, yeah. and he said he was happy to pay it off. Whatever that meant, yeah. But uh, I mean, is he still alert? Even I mean, what? How old is? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Echo, how Early old? Early eighties. How old is Bill Cosby? Bill Cosby is eighty-four years old. Thank you. Okay, you have a new notification. All right, shut up. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear it. Just <laughs> shut up. Have it. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, we want to sell you something. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, that's the new thing now on that thing. They keep trying to sell oh, you. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I got to tell you, though, do you know that this, what is it, this uh, Thursday, I think, the iPhone will become 20 years old? Is that mm. Yeah. Uh, and I thought about it. I looked over at Marjorie and I said, yeah, I said that is the invention that has changed our entire world. Everything. Everything. Yeah. I mean, that was the invention of the age. If you were to go back and say, what was the divining invention of this age? It would have to be the iPhone. I mean, but all... weren't there cell weren't there cell phones oh, before the iPhone? Oh, sure. Yeah, there they, were the cell phones, phones before the iPhone. They're huge. I mean, they were like bricks. No, but <laughs> also they didn't do what the iPhone did. Uh, they, they, you, know. you could use it for a phone and you could rudimentary text. Yeah, that, that was uh, it. That was yeah. it. But the iPhone yeah. became something that... Well, it's a mini computer. It's a yeah. mini computer that you have in your, in your pocket. Exactly. And that changed everything. All those other things, BlackBerry didn't change the world. If it did, it would still be here, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, and, and some of those yeah. other phones were just, they were, they were just a matter of being able to get a telephone you could take around with you. Uh, the iPhone a, isn't uh, just a telephone. I mean, yeah. up, in, up until the iPhone, they were trying to make the phone smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the iPhone came out and we went back to bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah. So there were there were lots of predecessors. There was the the, the, the trio. There was there were a bunch of the Palm Pilots. All yeah. of that was in the market. Well, why didn't those work, though? They, they did. It's just that Apple came out with one that was a little bit better. The first iPhone was nothing special, really, compared to what was out in the market. It was the next gen. The, no, in the, fact, in the, fact, the reason that the, the app iPhone became so popular was because of apps. 
Yeah. And the fact was that for the longest time, uh, what's his name o over at uh, Steve Jobs, fought against apps. He just wanted mm -hmm. to be their own apps, the ones that came standard with it, you know. And mm -hmm. and he uh, and they finally convinced him that he should let people build apps for it. And when the app thing opened up, then it really everybody wanted one of those phones. Mm -hmm. They had sort of added the the phone capability to the iPod and became the iPhone, and then then it started to be able to do a lot more on the internet and other things. Well, you could listen to all your music on that yeah. on that phone. You could take photographs with that phone. I mean, it, it, today whenever they have their yearly thing where they're showing the new iPhone, what is it they push more than any other feature on the iPhone? We've improved. We made made the camera better than it was last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's it's more you're carrying a camera around than a phone. That's the secondary use for it is a phone. Well, I heard the next generation will give you access to the multiverse. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And other bad motion picture tropes. Yeah. So anyway, you can watch movies on your iPhone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, you watch porn on your iPhone. That's the advantage to the iPhone. <laughs> Mind you, kidding me? Now you can take your porn everywhere. Isn't that amazing? Awesome. Remember, Marjorie, when porn was illegal? <laughs> Isn't it still illegal? The or first illegal? time I ever saw porn, I wanted to see porn. I'd never seen porn. I was I, I, I lived in Houston, Texas, and I had never seen porn. So I knew this guy who knew a guy who had a projector and would take his projector around to people's homes and show them porno films. <laughs> this, is how they, this is how they did porn in those days. You had to find the guy who had the projector. Uh, and and uh, so I did. And he brought it over. And there he was with the projector. And he started running this stuff. Grainy, horrible crap. I mean, yeah, but they had porn back in the 20s. Oh, know? I know they had porn back in the 20s, but that was exactly the way people got to see well, it. I came over to your house projector. with a projector and showed it to you. you know. Jesus. <laughs> and then he charged you for it. So awkward. <laughs> it's a yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's a slow <laughs> iPhone. It would be interesting to see if so Alex, you still have that projector you used to bring around? Yeah, right. sure. <laughs> What happens when you play those movies backwards? <laughs> I gotta ask. I gotta ask Shecky. It's abortion, it's Shecky, uh, Shecky was in the business of having films that he his company would, you know, what, what were you you license? Would, you would basically license the the stuff to them, and uh, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, but he would have all these films. And so he had all these different ways of making, putting the films. Later on, you wound up doing them all digitally, right? Everything I have is digital. Yeah. And I sold the Library of Congress my 16 millimeter film collection. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. For a nice princely sum. But yeah. the question I was going to ask you is when's the last time you used a projector? <laughs> I have an eight millimeter projector I bought about 10 years ago. It's still sitting in the dining room under my chair from the Ed Sullivan Theater. I've never even <laughs> plugged it in. Do you have a 16 millimeter projector? Yes, that's in a closet in the other bedroom. In the other bedroom. Why don't we go into business by taking that around to people's homes with porn on? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd have to get the film. Yeah, that would be a little that's different. Right. There's no more film. Well, there are, but you got to find them, you know. You know, yeah, and yeah. with digital, <clears throat> again, could you theoretically find a 16 millimeter print of a current porno film? What I tried to figure out is how porn, how these porn people actually make money today. Because I don't think I've ever paid for a porn video. I don't you? think they're making much money. Maybe Pornhub or whatever that company is. Yeah, but well, I that's free. Huh? I said that's free. You don't pay for porn. Gotta be adver advertising has to be. They used to oh. say that porn was had made more money every year than all the baseball and football and whatever leagues made combined. <laughs> but I'm wondering how they made that money when everybody was stealing their material. 
I think I think it has to do with um, selling advertising and enticing you into premium content and getting I don't know those cam girls and private viewings and all that. Really? Shit. I think so. I don't but know. But then, aren't you paying the woman to do whatever they do when you can say to them, "Would you blah blah blah"? You know. Yeah. Never actually seen one, so I don't know. But well, we have. Again, I've never seen one either. We have at least. Uh, one we at least women. have uh, three people on this program, or four people on this program right now, who really couldn't care about this topic. Uh. <laughs> And, and the other, the other seven have never seen porn ever before. I don't nope. know. Never have. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Mandy. The one who doesn't even know how to spell. Watch Man. a film. You had a, on Friday you interviewed this lady that um, had written a book about sexuality, and he was even saying, "I just think porn is gross now. It's very rapey, and it's just." So uh, Bill Maher said that the other night on his yeah, show. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I said. I was watching Bill Maher, and he was they was interviewing somebody that had written a book about sex, and they were talking. He was talking about porn, how it's just gone off the rails now. It's just so gross. Well, well it, again, and I always bring this up to Alex. Could you explain to me what a social influencer is? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a social influencer, Rick. Don't you know? Yeah. And how much money do you make doing it? Yeah. <laughs> millions, just millions. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Today's stars, you know, we we tend to think of like, what's what's the hit movie now? doesn't matter. doesn't matter. The people who are really making the money are people. Is it who, one who has the dog that plays the piano or whatever the hell they do? <laughs> well, what I, what I heard was uh, uh, a... Uh, Years ago, I think it was Oscar Levant who said entertainment is getting so, or maybe it was Jack Parr, entertainment is getting so low these days that one of these days, somebody's going to come out on stage and start their lawnmower and everybody's going to applaud. I think that's Jack Parr. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, you know, we're kind of at that. Yeah. 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 You know, I'd rather uh, watch someone start a lawnmower than most of the things on television. <laughs> you just open up boxes. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I hear about some teenage girl who's giving out makeup tips on the Internet, who's getting like four million views on YouTube. Or is she paying for those views? And I'm is thinking really about, getting... I, I worked all my life becoming a talent in broadcasting and trying <laughs> to apply my trade and try and get better and better at it. And once I get better and better at it, there's some girl out there upstaging me with her makeup tips. <laughs> I, I, I walked past a makeup store, you know, a few, it was a pre-pandemic, I think, but there were lines around the block. And I had said, asked what was going on. And it was one of these, you know, influencers was there in the in person. I mean, companies can, they're really being able to get cheap advertising. Because my daughter, for instance, she did Bacardi posts. She was a Bacardi girl, but her last huh. year. I mean, she made really good money. Just she had to do like seven posts a month, five posts a month with a just a Bacardi can in her hand. And she made good money. I mean, they would just Venmo her money. I just think that, you know, they're getting to where they're doing their advertising just through social media. So could we call your daughter an influencer? I don't. I, she is a very good friend that's got many more followers than her. I would call her more of an influencer, but she's. I wouldn't say she's an influencer. But who is she influencing? Just other college people. Like, here, oh. drink this Bacardi. You'll be cool, you know, if yeah. you drink. And, she and, pro and probably she's, she's uh, if she's anything like you, quite attractive. I mean, you know, it, it's also just the nature of your Instagram. Like, if if the posts are cute, you know, like... You have, there's a certain style of posts that make them. And does she know pleasant. how to do this? Does she know how to yeah, learn how to do it? And plus fashion and brand management was her major at UGA. Hey, would, so, you have her call me and give me hints? Cause I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, she was just in New York this past week. She's going to, she wants to move there. So she was up there like looking around and checking it out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. luck. So Alex, the, one good. of the biggest categories now are people making videos reacting to other videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch so, a guy listen to a band for the first time in his life and react to it. 
Well, you know, you know, you know, you know, it's very big, and I always forget to do it. Like when I got my new computer here, my new uh, Apple uh, Studio uh, is unboxing. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You just you take a video of yourself opening up your bo- the box for the first yes. time. Yeah. And, I mean, and, maybe and, not and, and, and people just, get millions of views for that. A million views. <laughs> we would joke around. Never that did that. What? what? That you I never did that stuff. All the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I uh, I should have done it. An old man opens up a box of apple here. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, I mean, uh, I, I see all these people getting, I, what was it, this one guy I really uh, kind of liked it. This is a guy that was, was uh, and I think I mentioned it on the show once, that, um calls up people who are like trying to scam you mm-hmm. and calls them and yep. then because he knows how to hack get yep. into get their around. computer while they're talking to him and yep. he hacks it and then he starts erasing everything on their computer yep. nice. several and, of those uh, and that guy's getting like four million views five million I think one of them I saw he had 15 million views because he was really going after somebody horrible uh, so I got to come up with something like that. You know, <laughs> I'm thrilled when like last week we got almost a thousand views to the show here. Wow. And I went, wow. You know, we really, we really hit an all time high on that one. But then I look at this guy with his 25 million <laughs> views because, he's just, you know, so I, I don't know what I've got to do, but. Uh, what, what, what's the most number of people you think you had listening to you in San Francisco? When you were here, do you remember the? I think an average morning. I don't know, but an average morning, I think we had twenty, twenty-five thousand people. Really? Wow! I would expect it more than that. No, it. it, it but it, that's in a, that's what they call a quarter hour rating. That means per right. quarter hour, that's what I got. Mm-hmm. Total, there's a cum, and the cum was somewhere like up around a quarter of a million or something like. That. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Then. Okay. So yeah, but no, I mean. It, I, I here was the really weird part is when I went to Sirius XM and they still to this day don't have any idea of how many people listen to us. Right. There was no way to no way to find out. You uh, they, the only thing they can now market. find out is how many people are listening to them on the internet. Okay. And listening to clips and things like that. They can get a number on that just like I can get a number right now, you know, on this. Um which is, I look at it, six. So uh, <laughs> somehow it, more, it, it gets bigger and bigger by the end of the week. It's something like 250 or something like that. But anyway, this particular <laughs> one thing. Uh, but uh, it, 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 you know, you, you really, I, I, it's serious. We had no idea of how many people were listening to us. I mean, I could have. to figure that out. Huh? You'd think that they'd be able to figure out what channel people are tuned to. Well, you see, the thing right? is, you, you had ratings, which uh, were a system, and broadcasters played into that, and it was easy to do, They, they or at least their, their methodology. But uh, in the case of Sirius XM, that was a signal. They didn't even know where it went. It, it, went, it was coming down from – it was actually being pushed from a – a satellite, and they didn't know how many people were picking it up. And then when they didn't know how many people were picking it up, they didn't know how many people were just listening to Alex. Hmm. You know, so, I mean, uh, all those things are, you know, it was a, it was weird. It was weird. I, I'd never been used to working in a space where I didn't know how many people were listening to me. Hmm. So, and now that I know precisely how many people are listening to me, it gets me depressed. Right. <laughs> you know, all that all that changes things. Mm. Hey, listen, uh, we got about a minute to go here. Anybody have anything important to talk about or say? Listen, our thoughts are with you, Steve, and I, I hope we see more of you, you know. You will. You will. Things are better. Yeah, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, I worried about you, you know. Uh, this is such a lovely group of people. You know, we really all do, I think, respect and, and think and care about each other. I know I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I, without this on the Monday morning, this just makes my week. Really? Uh, makes mine too. You know, the rest well, of you the said life. to me yesterday, 
somebody on the evening show was like, because you both were ill, you and Marjorie, thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, this was <laughs> this was over at the Quake uh, uh, Combo. Facebook page, and somebody uh, said Alex Bennett at eighty three, and I said, don't push my age. <laughs> uh, at eighty three. Uh, has COVID with his wife and thoughts and prayers to them. And I'm going, my God, I'm okay. I'm not dying. But, you know, they're still living in last year's paradigm where if you got COVID, everybody assumed you were going to be dead any day now. Right. You know, now it's a matter of how sick did you get? You know, and, uh, Is it three days uh -huh. or four days? And the worst part about COVID is I had to spend the entire week with Marjorie. Uh, <laughs> I love you, dear. I love you. I was worried about you today. You, were, you, you actually look like you're feeling better now. A little bit. A little bit. You know. Anyway, hey, I want to thank everybody here. It's just such a nice crowd. Uh, uh, Mandy, uh, yeah. Uh, Marjorie, yeah. Uh, Shecky, always the best, Shecky, to you. Uh, and uh, let's see here, uh, Edward. Bur oh no, I'll get to you. Oh, in a right. Charlie Wallace uh, and uh, Ludden Lafrisco, Steve Bender, and uh, Charlene. How's that last name? Solis. Solis and uh, 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 Pamela. Uh, Pam Paula. Oh, Paula. Thank you so much. We love, I love having you here because I, 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 I love it when you come to visit. So this is kind of my in lieu of kind of thing. Uh, Jeff, great to see you. And of course, Andrew, as always, you're terrific. All of you give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Don't forget and, about you know who. Huh? What? Edward oh, Berger. Oh, you know, I always forget because I'm <laughs> to the very end and I forget to say, and then Edward Berger. Say goodbye, Edward. That's all, folks. <laughs> Everybody wave. <goodbye. laughs> Thank you.